Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I'll be making a cable and copper K-tip knife. First things first, I need to clean the cable with acetone to get all the old grease and oil out for a better weld. Here I'm spraying the inside of the canister in an even and heavy coat of white spray paint. The spray paint keeps the insides of the can from sticking to the actual can and it makes for an easy removal afterwards. Here I'm using 1090 and 4% nickel steel powder to fill in any gaps in between the cables. I got this steel powder from Maritime Knife Supply. Many different companies carry it and you can find it pretty much anywhere you can find knife making supplies. With the hammer, I'm vibrating the canister to make sure that the powder goes in all the little voids in between to make sure I have a nice solid weld at the end. I'm often asked why I don't weld a holding stick to the canister and that's because I feel that the most important press is the first one and I like to press from the top down. That way I don't have any risk that my caps are going to pop off and throw hot powder everywhere. In the past I used to always squish the sides down first but I've learned that while pressing the sides down thus compress the canister you run the risk of popping off the caps and ruining the ends of your billets so it's always important to hit it from the top down first. Here I managed to rip the cap off with the press which I thought was really cool. The billet is loose inside and the corners are keeping it from actually sliding out. Here I move to the press to softly push in those corners and try to get it to release the actual billet that's inside. Remember because of the white spray paint it's actually loose inside so all I gotta do is make sure nothing's impeding it from coming out which it seems I get lucky enough to do this time. Now I'm just going to work the billet flat and get it about 3 16 to a quarter thickness to be able to cut it in half and restack it with a coarse steel and some copper sheets in between. I don't show it here but I like to weld all the way around the billet as airtight as my crappy welds can to ensure no molten copper leaks out. If I'm lucky and I keep it below about 1900 degrees Fahrenheit I should be okay but it's good insurance especially when I eyeballing the temperatures as I do in my forge. When working with copper I found that slow and steady is the best method to do it because if you over press it you run the risk of shearing all the pieces apart and after doing all this work that's the last thing I want to do. So I take small easy squeezes and I slowly work it out to as 
long and as thin as I can get the stock to. Alright guys, so the core is pretty well centered. I have a light right above me so the shine is getting in the way but you can pretty much see. The core is pretty centered but this thing is still 3 8 thick so I'm going to have to give it another pass through to bring it down. If I had a rolling mill this would be cake but I don't and this is too, too thick and too heavy for the chef's knife I want to make so I'm going to give it another pass probably off camera and I'll get back to you afterwards. Here I'm thinning down the knife. It's about 3 16 which I still feel is a bit thick for what I want, and I'd like to get it down to about an eighth before I actually start grinding out the knife. And we profile. Here I'm cycling the steel getting it prepared for the quench. I wish I had turned off the lights for this point because it's really, really cool to watch the steel cool down from about 15, 1600 degrees and watch how the heat actually like waves through the knife. I don't know, it's something you gotta see in person. It's really, really cool. And here is the knife after two tempering cycles and my toaster oven. Alright guys, so I ran into a little situation with this guy. Well, I already knew about it before, but I have a crack on the spine. But I don't think it runs too deep because once you get into the tank, stay with focus, once you get into a tank, it's solid. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to grind the spine down and see how deep it goes. Other than that, the knife is coming out pretty well. I also have a spot right here on the tip. Where it's also, you know, cracked, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to grind away all that steel anyways. So I'm going to concentrate on the spine and get that down right. And we can get on to grinding our bevels. Here I'm just grinding in my bevels nice and slow making sure not to overheat the knife since it is already hardened I don't want to overheat it and damage it in any way. One of my favorite parts about doing copper knives is actually seeing as I'm grinding through it and having that copper start to pop out and seeing how the wave changes as I grind deeper and deeper. Alright guys so I ended up having to cut back the tip because I just could not get the little piece at the end where it was peeling to actually stop peeling as far back as I pulled it. So I ended up doing that, which made it overall smaller, but still pretty cute. So next up, I'm going to go on hand and hand sand it. Everything's ready. And the rest I'm just going to do by hand. Yay, fun time. Hey guys, I just want to take a moment to show you guys what came in the mail today. Well, not today. It's been here for a little while, but this is the first chance I get to, you know, show it in a video. 
but I finally got my thousand subscriber plaque. So I just want to thank you guys for subscribing and for sh supporting and uh, watching the videos. I honestly didn't think anybody was going to watch, but it's pretty cool. 100,000 subscribers, that's crazy. If you appreciate all the hard work that goes into making these one-of-a-kind handmade knives, be sure to let me know by subscribing to the channel and dropping a comment down below and letting me know what you think about this pattern so far. Here I begin to prep up the handle material. What I'm working with is pink ivory and a mysterious darker steel I'm using for the bolster, I guess you would call on this kind of knife, the bolster area. Um, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. All I know is that I bought it here locally and it wasn't marked and I forgot what the guy told me, but I have a lot of it, so you'll probably be seeing it in more videos in the future. And we glue our handle. As you can see, all the stuff is on the floor. I did drop it, but luckily, the knife is safe and that's all that matters. Here I'm just squaring up uh, both pieces since they wiggled around a little bit when I clamped it up. And I went on ahead and drew some lines on it to try to square everything up. And I'm just grinding up to those lines, hogging off all that extra wood that I don't need. And after a hand sand, I'm going to go on ahead and apply this butcher block oil that I use. It has a little bit of wax in it, and I like to use it to get all those colors to pop and get some oil into the knife. As you can see, there are some black spots I filled in with some CA glue, and those pop right there. But this is a natural, unstabilized wood, so those gaps are there. And here's a finished look at the knife. Now that it's done, I really like the patterning of the cable and how it subtly pops through with that steel powder in there. And that copper just came out great. I love the look of copper knives and the way it contrasts between the actual outer Damascus and the coarse steel on the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys in the next one.